In second generation form, Kia's Picanto is a little city car with much bigger ideas. A glance at the styling and the mainstream engine lineup might not suggest that much dramatic change has taken place, but don't be deceived. A fundamental redesign has transformed the kind of car this can be. Previous Picanto models were great for popping to the shop, but not so good at venturing further afield. This one is much better, courtesy of a completely redesigned platform and body structure that's 40% more torsionally rigid. And this third generation design also gets stiffer anti-roll bars, stiffer retuned damping, torque vectoring to help get the grip down through the bends, and more direct, better weighted steering. As a result of all this, it's a more engaging, grown-up thing to drive than its predecessor. Refinement, that's been significantly improved too, although the two mainstream power plants certainly make their presence felt when the need arises to push on a bit. There are two normally aspirated petrol engine options, a three-cylinder 12-valve one-litre unit putting out 66 bhp, or the four-cylinder 16-valve 1.25-litre MPI variant that we're trying here, and that's the option that we'd recommend. Uh, with around 25% more pulling power than the base unit, it feels usefully more eager, and it's still decently economic, uh, managing 61.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 106 grams per kilometre of CO2. With this variant, there's four-speed automatic transmission available if you don't want the standard five-speed manual box. Um, now, the third Picanto engine option is the one to have if you can stretch to it. It's a three-cylinder petrol turbo TGDI power plant that puts out 99 bhp and really does give this Kia a big car feel. This Picanto is small, says Gregory Guillaume, the Korean maker's head of European design, but someone forgot to tell it that. And we know what he means. At around 3.6 metres long and around 1.6 metres wide, the third generation version of this model shares exactly the same dimensions as its predecessor, which means it certainly still qualifies as one of the tiniest cars you can buy. At the same time, though, changes to the wheelbase and the rear overhang have created significantly more space inside. Certainly, this cabin now punches well above its price point, as providing you can afford to stretch beyond the cheaper trim levels. Now, true, some of the plastic used are still a little hard to the touch, but you would expect that in a city car. And anyway, everything's so nicely integrated that you don't really notice these unusual air vents vertically bookmarking either end of the fascia and the dashboard divided into upper and lower sections by this satin chrome strip. As for infotainment, well, it's a case of two extremes. Unless you stretch to a pricey level three trim or this flagship GT line S spec, you don't even get a DAB radio. But if you can buy it at the top of the range, uh, you'll get as standard a class leadingly sophisticated media setup that's able to put rivals to shame. And we've got that here, a seven inch touchscreen which sits proud at the top of the dash, just like the monitor would in a BMW or a Mercedes. So let's take a look at how those in the back will fare. Once inside, you'll find a decent level of roominess for this class of car, providing you stick with the carriage of just a couple of adults. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Uh, the size of this has been increased courtesy of a 10 millimeter increase in the length of this rear overhang. Now that doesn't sound like much, but what's been delivered here is quite a big step forward from what was on offer before. So raise the light upright tailgate and a 255 litre cargo bay is revealed. Now that is 55 litres more than the previous generation Picanto model could provide and the space can be accessed via a loading lip that's now 55 millimetres lower too. And in summary, well for sure you can spend less on a five-door city car. After trying one of these though, we think you probably won't want to.